Hello, everyone. So to start our next session, our first speaker will be Yu Feng Ji. He is an assistant professor of biological and ag agricultural engineering at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. His focus is on using light to obtain um, phenotypic data on plants. His expertise is, includes uh, sensor-based pheno uh, plant phenotyping, application of optical sensors in agriculture, spectroscopy of various types, from near-infrared to mid-infrared and visual, as well as agricultural remote sensing and image analysis. He is an author of over 48 scientific publications, and earlier this year, he was recognized by American Society of Agricultural uh, and Biological Engineers, receiving the New Holland Young Researchers uh, Award. And today, he will be uh, speaking to us about the new spider cam, a large scale cable driven integrated sensing and robotic system for precision phenotyping and remote sensing, sensing agronomic research. So please welcome Dr. Yu Feng Ji to the podium. Um, uh, first, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, the invitation for me to come over to Saskatchewan and uh, give this presentation. And I have been in North America 15 years. This is the first time I actually set my foot in Canada. So um, it has been a, a really good experience for me. Um, I'm going to talk about new spider cam system that is uh, developed at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. So uh, new, the new part really carries two meanings. Uh, so it is a new use of uh, spider cam system for plant phenotyping. So the spider cams are origi originally for athletic and uh, sport events. And also uh, NU is uh, the initial for the University of Nebraska. Uh, so it is a larger scale ca cable driven uh, sensing robotic system right, for advanced phenotyping, remote sensing, and uh, ag agronomic research. And I have, normally I don't do that, I have a lot of uh, uh, people uh, in the authorship. And as you can see, we got uh, engineers, and we got uh, plant uh, scientists, agronomists, uh, plant breeders, and uh, we also got a remote sensing scientist and uh, ecophysiologist on team. So this is, has been a really a team effort to put uh, this system together. So uh, Tala already showed this early, but this is our, uh, the overview of our uh, spider cam system. So this, uh, again, this is a cable robot. So as you can see, we got a four poles uh, here. So you know, in the middle was this, our sensing platform. You really can't see, it, see this from the perspective, but that was attached to four cable, eight cables, actually, to the four poles. And that you know you pull the cab cables that you are able to localize and position where the sensor platform you want to be anywhere in that uh, imaging area. Uh, so the concept is fairly straightforward. And then here is the insert of the the sensor platform that I will discuss more uh, in the next few slides. So here is the the footprint of that system. So as you can see, so the four posts are here, right? And and then the entire system is divided into 130 uh, what we call the zones. So those zones are, each zone contain uh, six row of crops. So the breeders normally want to keep their uh, plots, you know, two rows, four rows, or six rows. And then, so that's really is for the, for the purpose of uh, plant breeding. And uh, as you can see, so those zones are important because underneath the ground, so the system got a, um, uh, uh, so it's a drip, a drip irrigation system, and uh, it is under, uh, it's a subsurface drip irrigation system, and also uh, it's a variable rate system, so meaning that if it can regulate the amount of water that you want to get to each of those zones. So as you can see, so this picture in the middle is when we start to construct that system. Uh, 
And then down here, those are the like 130 valves that individually control the amount of water being applied. So it has been a great facility if you want to do a drought study, a water use efficiency study, such and such. And we also have a weather station on the far right there, and that is, uh, uh, you know, we get the environment data, and then we can, uh, you know, compare. And if we wanted to, you know, get the environment data, uh, analyze it together with the phenotypes, and that allows us the capability uh, to do that as well. So the, the, the entire footprint is about uh, 0.4 hectare. Uh, by the way, I'm from China, so I'm, I feel pretty good that I don't have to do the conversion here. Uh, so this, this is a 60 meter by uh, uh, 60, uh, about 60 meter by 60 meter area. Um, okay, so so this is the inside view of the control room. You can see it's we got the you know the control panel here that you can actually like a joystick, right? So you can control it up and down and move forward and move backwards and left and right of the sensor platform you want to do. And then so all those all those screens here are monitor the important pieces of the, the components of the system. So if you, there's an, any exceptions or if there's any warnings that will show up and then you know the problem occurs and you're gonna address that. And this is a close view on the right there. That's a close view of the sensor dolly uh, platform. So we got the plant sensors and the environment sensors on it. So uh, I don't have a scale there, but this thing really is about um, uh, 100 kilograms weight and uh, so it's, uh, if I write next to it, it's a little bit taller than, than me. So it's, uh, it's a pretty big system. And uh, a lot of the, the plant sensors are hand down there. So let me see if I can see the laser. Uh, well, so it's, it's down there. Those are the, um, the sensor systems. So this, this slide really summarizes what's going on for the plant sensing part of the system. So this is the picture that you view from the, from the bottom, right? So you see there is a multi-spectral camera, so that's a four-band camera that captures RGB and an additional NIR. And then we also uh, get a thermal infrared camera that's looking at the, the, the temperature of the surface, the plant versus soil. And then we have a spectrometer on board, that's ocean optic spectrometer. So what's really nice about the spectrometer is we integrated a, a electronic shuttle on it so that you know, there's one fiber optic that's looking up, upward and to look at the, the down, downwelling radiation from sky and the sun. And also we have up looking, or we have a down looking part that looking at the upwelling uh, energy of reflected from the plant surface. So we, we uh, rotate the, the shadows so that you know, we capture an up-looking and we capture a down-looking, and that way then we take the ratio that gives, gives us a much better uh, um, quality of the spectral data that, that we're looking at. And finally, we also got a LiDAR system that, um, that uh, returns the, uh, the point cloud uh, and we can get the um, the plant height, and uh, hopefully later on we can also get the 3D structure of the canopy uh, from the point clouds. So one thing I do want to point out is so this whole integration is a very uh, iterative process because you know you got you got all the different vendors and they got different uh, specifications. And when we select the sensors, and we not only consider its uh, uh, capability, but also consider how well. Uh, all these things can be fit together and, and into a, a functional system, right? So as you can see, you know, a lot of sensors got a 12, uh, 12 volt uh, operation uh, voltage, and that's important because, you know, we got to onboard a voltage, uh, vo uh, the battery here that you can see, I can't, I can't. Electronics. So we got a battery packing there that provides 48 volts, and then we got the the DC DC converter that converts that to the 12 volt that supply the entire system. And we also got an onboard computer that logs the data, control all the uh, all the hardware. Um, and we also have a few other sensors. We got a GPS, and then we got uh, you know the, uh, the, com the the battery stuff, and then we got also got an anemometer which measures the wind speed. Uh, the, the time of measurement. So, and we do the complete software development in-house. Um, so we use LabVIEW to develop the system because, you know, it's, it's, 
it's it's a visualized software and you know it, it got an exceptional capability to control the the hardware. Um, so uh, so the main um, the main functionality of the system is really for the task planning. So before you know each day we're gonna have say we're gonna measure this 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 plot and then we're gonna you know create a waypoint map and then you know, with X, Y, and the Z coordinates in that file, and then we upload to the system, and then the system is gonna read that sequentially and drive the, uh, drive the sensor platform to the intended location for measurement. And the motion control is a big part. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, um, you know, it, when, it when it arrives to a certain point, it, you know, it, it arrives at, at the right speed, you know, things like that. And also do the camera and the sensor trigger, and finally it does the data storage. So this entire system is developed in-house uh, at UNL. So I have a little video, shows the functionality of uh, the typical operation day. And as you can see now, it's, it's working, so it's uh, scanning the east half of the field, which is under corn. Right, so you can see that it just to go over the entire uh, system, uh, the, the, the field, and then now it's measuring the soil being part of it. And it does that again for the uh, maze part. And you can see there's the little, uh, you know, the, the board that in the middle, that is for the uh, calibration of the spectrometer, which I'm gonna discuss a little bit more uh, later. Um, so one, one particular uh, advantage of the system is, you know, we can specify a few plots that we want to measure for the particular day, and the system can just go repeatedly, uh, take many measurements across the, you know, across the time, and that gives uh, us the exceptional capability to look at the temporal dynamics of the, some of the, the traits that we are interested, in. and I, I will have an example for you to look at that. Okay. So hopefully this is gonna give you an idea about you know, how the system actually uh, works. So uh, regarding uh, the, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that in the, all the sensors are looking at the same location in the field because we're gonna compare, you know, we're gonna compare the vegetation cover, uh, the height, you know, all those traits that get distracted from the image, and we wanted to make sure that, you know, they are they, they are looking at the same object, right? So this is, you know, the, the illustration of the uh, of the sensor platform uh, footprint. So the RGB image got the, the, the widest view, and then in the middle is the thermal infrared measures the temperature, and then so the red circle is really the, where the footprint of the fiber optic is. So that's a 25 degree uh, field of view, and then the rectangle area is where the scanning liner is. So it all. We all make sure that it measures something from the middle two rows, which is de which defines a plot. And then on the right there, that's the you know our image analysis routine so far. So we are uh, we got a, a four-band multispectral camera, and then we you know we we formed the NDVI image, and that was very sensitive to uh, separate the. Uh, the plant pixels from the soil pixel, and you can see, you know, it's a really nice bimodal uh, distributing there. Uh, the adaptive, adaptive thresholding works fairly well, and then we got the binary image, and then we also register the thermal image with the uh, the RGB, the the, the multispectral image, uh, because you know that the RGB does a better uh, segmentation. So when we uh, register those two together align them perfectly, and then you can use that binary image to, the, to do this uh, segmentation on the thermal IR so that you can separate the temperature from the canopy versus from the soil. So that's the, the pipeline of that, our analysis. Um, so we did uh, quite a few efforts trying to validate, to make sure that what sensor measured is, uh, is consistent with what we can measure from the ground. So you can see the, the, the picture here that the the, the team is you know, taking field notes and we measure plant height. And here is the example, down here is the example of, uh, of the LIDAR uh, measurement. You can see all those canopy points are bluish color and then the ground, the, the, the soil pixel are uh, uh, sort of uh, red color. And then we make the difference between the two and we get the, the, the plot height. And then we compare the plot height with the, you know, with the a LIDAR height, and it turns out it's highly uh, accurate. So we got a root mean score error of a point, uh, it's a three centimeter. So we compare this number with a lot of the published work, and this is really at the higher end of the accuracy. Uh, we're very happy with the system. And regarding the temperature, so we, we, we extract the plant 
uh, uh, surface temperature, and we also use a handheld IR gun, and we go in to take the measurement. And uh, you know, we got a high R square, but we do see a shift between you know the the IR camera temperature and the ground uh, ground based temperature, and that could be because you know those two sensor systems are not as cross calibrated, so you see a a constant shift. Um, and one thing we also notice is the temperature is really a, a, a trait, very hard to measure. It changes uh, drastically according, uh, across the day, and uh, it really depends on when you take that measurement that makes a, a big difference how you interpret the data. And then also on the far right there, that's the image that we lay down the calibration tops. Those are standard you know, calibration tops with 5%, 45%, 75% reflectance. So we drive the sensor platforms to uh, you know, on the, above those uh, uh, calibration tops and uh, a couple of times during the day just to make sure that, you know, what you measure is, is accurate enough and well calibrated uh, for the spectral data. So, you know, I, I show you a few uh, examples of what the system can do, right? So this is from our 2018 data. That is from the, the soybean part of the experiment. Uh, so you can see the measurement you know, from uh, July 10th to August 15th, and that's the, really the, that five weeks is the, when, when the soybean it grows uh, uh, tremendously. And you can see the plant height. You know, so each of those uh, box, box plot is uh, a summarize of 180 soybean plots from the west part of the field. And you can see, and we, and this is all totally automatic, so we, don't, we do not do manual uh, operation of the image at all. So we just you know, develop the algorithm and let, let the algorithm to process all those images. And this is what we got. So you can see the plant height, you know, get a upward trajectory, and then gets to some point uh, uh, after uh, August the 10th, you can see the starts to level off, right? And this is where you know, the, uh, the crop starts to get the maximum height. And if you look at the vegetation cover, it actually saturates, you know, approach to one, one is 100% cover, means there is no gap at all. You know, once you look at the from the nadir, you can't see any soil. So that's, you can see, you know, above, like, about August 1st, you already got the full canopy for most of the, the, the plots. So that's the, you know, one of the gross dynamics that we can extract from uh, the, the sensor system. And then, so in the following, I would like to show you two novel uh, applications with the, the SpiderCam system. And we are really excited about that because that is something that we, this is something that is not easy for the other phenotyping systems, basically. So, uh, so one thing, so what show here is uh, an example of the temporal, it's a, it's a time sequence of the temperature image, right, of the soybean plot. And we are able to, as, as I mentioned before, that you can drive the sensor platform to a particular plot and then take an image there. And you can do this many times across the day. And we started, so the first image is taken, uh, you know, 12.32. So that's uh, a little bit after the, uh, the, the noon. And then the last set of images are taken at 17.20. Um, and you can see there's a tremendous variation uh, in the temperature the, the temperature of the canopy, and I intentionally put this on a, on a false color scale, just so that it can be a little bit better uh, visualized uh, about the you know about the variation, and you can see there's a big difference between the canopy and the soil, right? You know, uh, a lot of the, the phenotyping work use the IRT sensor, which is a point measurement, which isn't spatially resolved. Um, a uh, problem with that is, you know, you integrate a lot of uh, soil information into the canopy, which n not necessarily tells you about the plant. You know, uh, so this is this is the better way to do it, and uh, this you know tells you a lot about the dynamics. And the other thing I want to point out is, you know, if you look at the the 12 images here, you know, some some of the the time the canopy temperature is really uniform, but sometimes because of the solo action, uh, uh, you know, one part of the temperature, one part of the canopy is brighter, which means that the temperature is higher than the other part. So there's a lot of things that we can, uh, we can uh, try to get from this kind of information. So, with, so uh, here is uh, one step further of, what, you know, of that, that image. So we got the image sequences, and this, this is uh, the results from the image processing, right? So 
the x-axis is the time, and the y-axis is really the temperature. So as we said, that we are able to separate the canopy from the soil, and so really the canopy temperature is this brown dots here. So there's a, so for this particular day, we uh, trace 36 plots, so 12 times each plot, so there's like 432 uh, dots here over the, over the day, and you can see how you know, the biggest swing of the soil temperature, because that makes sense, because on a dry day, if the soil is dry, then the temperature fluctu fluctuates more, as opposed to the canopy, which has uh, these green dots, and they, you see a variation of them, but you don't see a nearly bigger uh, swing uh, as compared to the soil. Um, so also put here is the air temperature, right? So air temperature is this red, uh, red dot. So this is also something confuses me because we always think that the temperature is gonna go down like you know, three or four uh, in the afternoon, but in particular in Lincoln that day, you know, we see the temperature continues uh, uh, to rise till like 5 p.m. in the afternoon. So, <clears throat> so that's that, and we are talking to the people from uh, remote sensing. Uh, sections because uh, uh, we believe there's a tremendous uh, potential for this kind of information to be able to figure out what is the plot level, uh, what are use the efficiency of the energy balance from the surface, which you know can translate a lot into you know how are we going to tie those information with the you know with the genetic makeup of the plants. Um, so the other new information that we got is really the solar-induced chlorophyll fluorescence signal. Um, so, I w so this is a typical spectrum of the crop uh, canopy, right? So you know you got you got a little bit of bump here, which is green, and then when you get to the NIR, there's a sharp rise because of the you know because of the red. That's called a red edge, and then that's where, where, this is very uh, well established in plant science. Uh, but I wanted to direct your attention to around the 760 uh, nanometer, and that is where the, the Fraunhofer line is, so that's where the oxygen uh, absorbs a lot, and that, that is also happened to be where the chlorophyll fluoresce maximum. So, and it's because of this, you know, remote sensing community says, well, we can use, you know, we can use that to retrieve the solar induced fluorescence, which would tell you a lot about the activity of the chlorophyll in the plants. And, uh, and this is a, a very difficult to measure because you, know, you have to set up the condition right and you, you, know, you, you need the absolute high uh, signal to noise ratio of the spectrometer and you need to have a very finely resolved uh, wavelength information. So, and we, ha we got all of those uh, here and uh, so luckily enough, we were able to extract that information. That's this, this little bump here. Now it's this little bump here in the, uh, uh, around the 760, and that little insert there is to magnify it to you so that you see the, the fluorescence. Right now, we are not able to extract the absolute uh, quantity of the fluorescence because right now everything, all the measurement is relative, so all we see is, is the fluorescence riding on the reflectance. Um, uh, if there is no fluorescence, that curve should be smooth, right? But you know, that bump is caused by the fluorescence signal. So this is another um, uh, exciting thing that we see that we, can, we feel like we can use a spider cam system to advance the science here. Um, so some unique features of uh, uh, new spider cam. Uh, I got uh, asked a lot about what's, you know, what's the difference or what's the advantage the system has uh, compared to a UAV, right? And um, here are a few of it, um, the advantages that the system has. So it is a precise, it's a repeatable uh, sen sensor position, X, Y, Z. So this is more precise than the, the, you know, the RTK GPS. So it's a millimeter level uh, precision. And then it got a very large sensor payload. So it's around 30 kilo kilogram. And uh, we do have the plan to put in hyperspectral imaging system next season, and we figure out all the engineering challenge already. It's just a matter of uh, we put that on and integrate that with the rest of the system. And it's a persistent monitoring, right? As you can see, you know, UAV, you can fly that up there for a couple of times a day, probably, but you know, this one, um, uh, with a fully charged battery, uh, battery pack, we can uh, operate seven to eight hours, no, nonstop during the day. And uh, so one thing really uh, that we didn't do yet, but uh, it's also got a really 
uh, nice potential is the multi-angle imaging because you know we, the system does have a pan a tilt unit underneath it, and we can control the angle. We can control the exact angle how the camera is going to be oriented to the canopy. And uh, multi-angle imaging is a big thing for the remote sensing, and uh, um, and we we feel like we can do a lot of research in that regard as well. And it is very flexible, so you can see and it go, it go across the field uh, very quickly. And uh, we also have a subsurface drip irrigation system and real-time soil moisture monitoring, uh, and to you know to to gather a lot of the information regarding the moisture. So this is really again this is really a team effort uh, from the UNL. So we got uh, so many units that got involved for for the, the development and establishment of this uh, wonderful system. And I feel like there's so many things that we can do regarding uh, the research and ad advancement of the science. Thank you.